Is it not your income? 10%, is it not part of your income? It's part of your income. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> are we not studying the Bible? Uh, we are studying together. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are studying together. And if I say something you don't understand, you are free to ask questions. So what is the matter? Relax. So that word tight is an English word. It just means a tenth of your income. It doesn't mean antichrist. It's an English word. It simply means a tenth of your income. So, um, the question is, should a Christian give a tithe of his income, a tithe of his income in church? Well, of course, if you have been following me for long now, you know I don't just answer questions like that. So, let's get into the scripture and see. Now, pay attention. There are two schools of thought in the body of Christ. Okay? And if you are not careful, you will think I belong to one, but I don't belong to any. There are two schools of thoughts. The first school of thought says, the New Testament has abolished tithe. Forget it. That's one school of thought. The second school of thought says, it's continuing. And they have reasons. One of their reasons is that the tithe started before the law. It started in Genesis 14. Then they quote Hebrews 7 and Matthew 23 and on and on. That school says we should give tithe because it was before the law of Moses. My issue with the school of thought is this. What they seem to focus on is on us, which is selfishness. I should give tithe. I, 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 I shouldn't give it. Both of the schools are selfish because the focus is, is more like should we, can't we, can I? Can't I? Is focused on I. And you see that kind of approach is selfish. Should I give tight? Why shouldn't I give? It's all about me, me, I, I. It's not what does God say about the tithe. It's about me. Should I? Should I not? Can't I? Couldn't I? Can I? It's not about what is God saying about that issue of the tithe. And that's the salient point that makes the two schools of thought ridiculous. That's actually where the rubber meets the road. Because the point is, what does God say? How many of you want to know what God says? Because that's what matters actually. Alright? Now, so the critical question is, why did God ever request for the tithe? That's the question we should be asking. Why did God ever request for the tithe? When you know that, then the answer will be clear. You know exactly what the scripture says. Why did God ever request for the tithe? We know that the tithe is basically situated in the Old Testament. Except for the few times it's mentioned in the New Testament. Jesus mentioned it twice. Hebrews chapter 7 mentioned it between Abraham and Melchizedek. And in every Bible study, you should look at the law of first mention. Have I told you that before? You look for the law of first mention. Alright? When was it ever mentioned first? It's in Genesis chapter 14. That's the first time the word tithe ever appeared in the Bible. The background was Abraham just recovered Lot from captivity. He and his 318 men. And they came back with the spoils of war. It means you go to war, you win the war, and of course you know about war, when you go to war and win war, you come back with more than what was taken. Because you come back with what was taken and what they had in that land. So you come back with a lot of, you know, a lot of bounties. You come back with a lot of stuff from the spoil of war. Now Genesis 14, 16, please, I beg you, I beg you, if you ever followed what I taught from last Sunday till yesterday, I beg you, I need your 150% attention now. Genesis chapter 14, verse number 16. <clears throat> and he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedeloma. 
and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shave, which is the king's dale. Which is the king's dale, 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. Melchizedek was a priest of the most high God. Verse 19 and 20. And he blessed him. That's the priesthood of Jesus. The priesthood of Jesus is the priesthood of the blessing. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Did you observe that it was not after Abraham gave tithes that he was blessed? He was blessed before he gave tithe. He blessed him. Straight. Blessed. Because he's not expecting anything from Abraham. Blessed be Abraham of the most high. The possessor of the heavens and the earth. That is Abraham. The reason why you won the war, the reason why you defeated your enemy is because you are blessed. He brought Abraham's attention to the victory that Abraham just got. And out of gratitude for what victory Abraham has won, Abraham said, no, I can't take the blessing empty-handed. In honor to the blessing that God gave me, take a tenth of what we brought. Are we together here? Melchizedek didn't ask for it. But Abraham had sense enough to know that if I have been this blessed, I can't just be giving testimony empty-handed. If God has indeed done well for me, I've got to respond to God in honor. In honor. A tenth of the spoils of the recovery. Look at verse 20. Notice. Melchizedek said blessed not cause so he acknowledged that Abraham won that victory because of the blessing notice the law of first mention no record that God asked him to give the tithe but he gave he wasn't asked it was not an obligation Genesis 28 16 is the second place where the word tithe showed up 28 16 and jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew it not next verse jacob was in a vision and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place this is none other but the house of god and this is the gate of heaven verse 18 and Jacob arose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. 19. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. At the first. Are you still here? Give me the next verse. And Jacob vowed a vow saying. Nobody asked him. Jacob vowed a vow saying. If God will be with me, because it is always blessing before tithe. If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go. And don't forget at this time Esau was chasing to kill Jacob. So Jacob needed every help to stay alive. Okay, put it up. If God will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and remnant to put on. Next verse. So that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent unto thee. If you will bless me. If you will bless me. Alright now. So Jacob... In that Genesis account, we find that at no point do we have any record where God asked them for tithe. This came out of their own personal decision. The fact that God did not ask the tithe doesn't mean that the men that gave did not please the heart of God. The fact that God didn't ask doesn't mean that when they offered to him from the generosity of their heart, it didn't please him. Of course he did. Now, come over to Leviticus, the Levites. 
Leviticus 27, 30 to 32. Please follow me patiently. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. On the line, it is holy unto the Lord. On the line that. It is holy unto the Lord. That's a good word to underline. Next verse. And if a man will at all redeem out of his tithes, he shall add there to the fifth part thereof. Next verse. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. Underline that. The tent shall be holy unto the Lord. God, you know, God talked about a particular land that they were going. That's the promised land. Now, God gave them the promised land, which is a type of our inheritance in Christ. And he said to them, a tenth of everything you get out of that land is holy unto me. That is, is mine. It should be dedicated unto me. Remember, God spoke about a particular land. Even though we know that the whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. But God spoke about a particular specific land. Everything belongs to God. But God speaks about a specific promised land. What do we learn from that? It shows you that God never required tithe from people who did not have relationship with him. God never required tithe from people who never had relationship with him. The requirement of the law, I mean of the tithe, was for God's covenant people in the Old Testament. God's covenant people. Relationship preceded God's requirements of giving the tithe. Relationship preceded God's requirement of giving the tithe. Relationship. The tithe was given by God's people, not just everybody. So sometimes when you hear people say, that man is an unbeliever, but he pays tithe. See how God has blessed him. Tithe, stop that. Unbeliever. The offering of an unbeliever is an abomination to God. Because he cannot buy salvation. So an unbeliever giving to God is bribing his way. It's an abomination. He is desecrating the holy place. Proverbs 15 verse 8. Proverbs 15 verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. For an unbeliever to offer to God his money, he must first of all accept God's gift of salvation. He must. Proverbs 21, 27. Proverbs 21, 27. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? So, he, an unbeliever must acknowledge that he cannot stand before God. It will take Jesus for him to stand before God. An unbeliever must acknowledge that. But if he brings money to stand before God, that is an abomination. That's what happened to Cain. That was the problem of Cain. Cain and Abel were sinners. Their parents were sinners. All of them were sinners. Abel was not better than Cain. Two of them were in the same boat. They were all sinners. But in the garden, God taught them a principle. In the garden of Eden, after the fall of Adam, the principle of substitution, the principle of propitiation, and the principle of the blood. Because God wrapped Adam and Eve with the skins of an animal, and blood was all over the skin of that animal. God had to do that to cover them. Why? So that they can stand before God and hear what God has to say to them. They couldn't just stand before God. No, he had to cover them with the skin of an animal with blood to enable them to have a stand for him to tell them 
the consequence of what they have done. Are we in the building? Their kids ought to have learned from that. Because they were coming before God. So Cain now is bringing his fruit, he's bringing his works, he's bringing his efforts, trying to, to qualify himself. Abel, learning from what had happened with his parents, said, I can't approach God on my own. I need a substitution. So he brought an animal, which is a type of Jesus' sacrifice. That is why Abel was accepted. Because Abel expressed faith in the sacrifice of Christ. That's why by faith, Abel, Hebrews 11.4. But of Cain, he was of the wicked one. Why? Because he's an abomination. Why? He tried to buy God's presence. Are we teaching good? And God said, no. If you do well, sin offering lieth at your door. What you ought to have brought is a sin offering. Not fruits of farm. I don't eat corn. I don't eat tomatoes. All I want is sin offering. But you are trying to buy my forgiveness and acceptance with papa. Guava. So Cain came to God on his own merit. He was called wicked. Abel was called righteous. Why was he called righteous? Because he didn't come in his own strength. He came by the blood. So that offering was his faith in the blood. And the Bible tells us that that blood is nothing to be compared with the blood of Jesus. That speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Are you still in the building? So the blood of Abel is the blood of the animal that he brought. The blood of Jesus is the blood of the Son of God of whom that blood of Abel typified. So imagine Cain's sin is what people do today. Your money, your offering, your tithes is not a means of justification. Your money, your offerings, your tithes is not a means for justification. I have had people say your offering will speak for you. That's total nonsense. The blood of Jesus speaks for you. Your offering cannot speak for you. It is Christ's offering that speaks for you. So the giving of the tithe, either by Abraham, Jacob, or under the law, was never a means for justification. In Numbers 18.20, I'm going to read three scriptures as I begin to cap up this first service. In Numbers chapter 18 verse 20. Numbers 18.20. Please listen carefully to the scriptures I'm about to read. Numbers chapter 18 verse number 20. Are you there? And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance. In their land. Thou shalt have no inheritance. In their land. Neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part. And thine inheritance. Among the children. Of Israel. So we see three portions of scripture. Please look at me everybody. God lays a foundation. For the tithe. God lays a foundation. Aaron belongs to the tribe of Levi. That's the same land we are talking about. Now look carefully at 18, Numbers chapter 18, verse 21 to 23. Please listen carefully as I read. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tent in Israel for an inheritance. For their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. 22. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear the sin and die. But the Levites do the service. The Levites do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel, 
they have no inheritance. Whenever you hear forever, anytime you hear forever, it means what God alone will do. Forever. Now, that same numbers, chapter 18, let's read 24 to 29. Long read, but important. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as an heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore, I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 26, Thus speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithes, which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall offer up and heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. And this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you, as though it were the corn of the threshing floor, and as the fullness of the wine press. Are you still following? 28. Thus you shall also offer and heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which you receive of the children of Israel, and you shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest. 29. Out of all your gifts, you shall offer every heave offering of the Lord, of all the best thereof, even the hallowed part thereof out of it. Look at me, everybody. There were 12 tribes. How many tribes? 12. So God picks a tribe that we are to stand as priests. They were not to walk. They were not to do business. They were to stay in the tabernacle. So, whatever everybody in Israel earned, they will support the children of Levi with a tenth of it. So, twelve tribes of Israel, one tribe secluded, eleven tribes are to bring ten percent. So, at the end of the day, hundred and ten percent of all the land goes to the Levites. Are we in the building? Now, so they were supposed to take a tithe, the Levites, out of the 110%, the Levites were to take a tithe and put it in the storehouse. Are we following? So there was tithe to the Levites, then there was tithe of tithe that will be put in the storehouse. Okay? Are you following? Now that's the one Malachi said, the Levites were robbing God. Now, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 12, 17 to 19. Please be patient. Let's, let's explore these things together. Deuteronomy 12, 17 to 19. Glory to God. Thou mayest not eat within thy gates the tithe of thy corn or of thy wine. Or of thy oil, or the firstlings of thy herds, or of thy flock, nor any of thy vows which thou vowest, nor thy freewill offerings, or heave offering of thine hands. But thou must eat them before the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy main servant and thy maid servant and the liver that is within thy gates, thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God in all that thou puttest thy hands unto. Take it to thyself, that thou forsake not the Levite, as long as thou livest upon the earth. Deuteronomy 26, 11 to 19. That's the third scripture. Deuteronomy 26, 11 to 19. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God giveth unto thee. And unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase, the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Take note of that classification. The Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. 13. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hallowed things out of my house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, to the widow, according to all thy commandments, which thou hast commanded me, I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. 
I have not eaten thereof in my morning, neither have I taken away aught therefore thereof for any unclean use, nor given aught therefore thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven, and bless thy people Israel. And the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest unto our fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. They are already in the land. This day, the Lord thy God had commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep to them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. 17. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord had avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he had promised thee and thou shouldest keep all his commandments. 19. And to make thee high above all nations which he had made in praise and in name and in honor. And that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God as he has spoken. Now look at me. Notice. Number one. God determined the use of the tithe. God determined the use of the tithe. Number two. He commanded in Numbers 18 that the tithe should be a portion for the Levites. The tithe should be a portion for the Levites. In Deuteronomy 12, where we read, he told us where the Levite can be given and when. And he told us how, where, when, and how it should be eaten. In Deuteronomy 12, he told us where the tithe can be given and when the tithe should be given. And he told us how the tithe should be eaten. Number three. We see the frequency of the tithing. We see the yearly one. And the one done every three years. Where he mentions the Levites. The strangers. And the fatherless. And the widows. Now. Look at Deuteronomy 14.26. He now mentions the attitude. 1426 Deuteronomy. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. For oxen or for sheep or for wine or for strong drink or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God and thou shalt rejoice. That's the attitude. When they pay the tithe, they are not supposed to be frowning. They are supposed to eat it and rejoice. That's the attitude. Alright, now, why did God ask for the tithe? That's what we've been trying to arrive at. Why, why, what was the intent? Why did God ask for the tithe? Please pay attention. We have seen clearly that the tithe did not go to heaven. He commanded where the tithe should go. God says, out of all I give you, there is one that is not for you. So he says... It is for the Levites, the strangers, widows, and fatherless. So God determined the way it was used. Now look at why all this. We have seen how it was used. We have seen what it was used for. Now what's the point? Why couldn't God just bless the Levite, bless the stranger, bless the widow, and bless the fatherless. There should be a reason. Now he told them why in Deuteronomy 14. And that's what every believer needs to look at. The reason. Because God never changes. If God has a reason ever for something. That thing may not be applicable the same way. But that reason will still suffice. Because God never changes his mind. Okay? So what was the reason behind the tithe? That's fundamental. Deuteronomy 14.22 Deuteronomy 14.22 And thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. 23 And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. In the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks. Why? 
that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. That's the reason. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord your God always. Give me the amplified of Deuteronomy 14.23. Deuteronomy chapter 14.23, the amplified version. And you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place in which he will cause his name and his presence to dwell. The tithe of your grain, your new wine, your oil, and the firstlings of your herd and your flock. That you may learn reverently to fear the Lord your God always. That you may learn to honor God. Or that you may learn to reverence God. To honor God or to reverence God. So the reason for the tithe was worship. Worship. To honor God or to reverence God or to worship God. The reason for the tithe was reverence. He makes it clear that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. Now the question we should ask ourselves in the church age is, is the reason sustainable today? That's the question we should ask ourselves. That reason, is it sustainable today? Eh? Eh? Okay, you say no, you say yes. What is the reason? To honor God. To reverence God. To worship God. Is that reason still valid today? As Are we still required to worship God? Are we still required to honor God? Are we still required to reverence God? So the reason for the tithe is sustainable today. The reason is sustainable. Okay? Now, so since the reason is sustainable, is the how sustainable? <laughs> eh? Is the how sustainable? Eh? The how is year by year. The how is year by year because that is when the harvest is brought in. So is the how sustainable? No. You don't order God once a year. So the how expires. But the why is sustainable. We are rightly dividing now. Are we working together? Okay, now. Again, the type of the tithe. What was the tithe? What were the things for tithe? Herbs and animals. Is it sustainable today? No. No. Now, the next question is, where are they supposed to bring the tithe to? The temple. Is the venue sustainable today? No, because we don't have temples anymore. So temple, gone. Year by year, gone. But why? Sustained. Power City, are you here? Okay, now. The cardinal fact of the tithe is that God asked it so that they will fear him. Can we sustain that in the new covenant? Yes. Fear there is honor. It seems to be that we cannot sustain the frequency, we cannot sustain the tithe, we cannot sustain where, because that's the temple. And you are the temple today of the Holy Ghost. You are the New Testament priest and king. Huh? But we can sustain the why. We can sustain the why, but we can't sustain the when, we can't sustain the what, but we can sustain the why. The why is so that you fear God and honor him. So question. Can we sustain the why in the new covenant? Yes. Can we sustain the worship of God, the honor of God in the new covenant? What I'm simply saying is, is there a teaching in the new covenant for honoring God? Is there a teaching in the new covenant for worshiping God? Exactly. So that 
that reason why they gave the tithe, which was honor and worship, can be sustained. But the products and the venue and the, the yearly givings cannot is abolished. What's most important is the why. So the basis of the tithe is to honor God, to fear God. And do you know that the basis of the tithe was not the blessing? They didn't give the tithe to be blessed. They were blessed before they gave it. So why did they give it? To honor God. And today, we give to honor God. So there's a lesson we are taking out of the tithe that is applicable as instruction in righteousness in the New Testament, which is to honor God. If I'm teaching good, say I hear you. Please pay attention because I'm, I'm rounding up right now. Now, Abraham was blessed. Then he gave the tithe. Jacob said, if you bless me, then I will tithe. But when we get to the law of Moses, the law had to tie blessings to tithe. Because the law is about works. <laughs> the law is about performance. You know why? You know why? You know why? You know why they tie blessings to the tithing under the law? Because of their heart. Since their heart is hard, let's tie something that will motivate them to do it. Let's tie. If you tithe, I will bless. If you don't tithe, devour us. So that this, their hardened heart, can be softened by what is tied to it. Moses, because of the hardness of your heart. But we today don't have hardened heart. So we don't need blessing to be tied to our givings. Our hearts are hearts of flesh. We honor God. Not because of what we want to get, but because of what he has done. If I'm teaching God, shout, I hear you. We honor God because of what he has done. So the word fear there is the word honor. Why should they honor me? Because I have given them everything they have. I've given them everything they have. Oh, you don't know the blessing that you have in Christ. You are busy complaining of not having enough money. <laughs> there are people that have enough money but cannot stand up. They can't stand up. <laughs> Some time back I had dizzy spells. I understand the blessing of being able to stand and move like this. Dizzy spells. I'll just wake up in the morning. If I just stand up, I fall. I couldn't stand. Then I said, ah, and people just stand up and move freely like that. I said to mama, honey, I can't stand. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm telling you, I just woke up this morning. As I got out of the bed and put my leg, the whole place was swimming. I fell back on the bed. I can't stand. Even when I consciously by force try to walk, I, I start tilting to one side. So I have to hold something to gain balance. And I can't move fast. And that spell, those dizzy spells kept coming off and on for two weeks. It was terrible for me. Then I started saying to God, the day these things leave me, I would thank you for the ability to stand up and walk and be able to balance. Then I said, so there are, there are people that cannot balance. So even being able to stand and balance is a blessing. There is more to life than money. There are many things you have taken for granted. You are not even aware of all the blessings you have. I mean, imagine me not able to stand. How will I preach now? How will I preach? That will have been the end of my ministry. And the end of my life. Because if I can't preach, why will I be alive now? It's useless as far as I'm concerned. I would rather just die. Why will I be on earth and be useless? And within two weeks, everything left. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Then I did like this. So I can stand. I did like this. I did like this. I said, ah, I did like this. I stopped. I went backward. I went far. I said, thank you, Jesus. You never know the blessing you have to even be able to keep your head like this. It's a blessing. There are people that their head can lose that. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> when we talk about God has given you power, the 
that's the blessing. Somebody shout, I am, I am blessed. See, there are people with money that cannot urinate. I'm not joking. They cannot urinate. A young man came here for prayer. He cannot urinate. When his urine gather, they will take him to hospital. They will collect money to remove it. He came here for prayer. I ministered to him and prayed for him. He said two days after the prayer, when he got home, in Uyo here, something told him to go by the tap, 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 you know tap, tap that brings water, okay? So he went to the water tap and stood, and then he opened the tap and the water was flowing. He said he believes it's the spirit of God. That as he was watching the water flowing out of the tap effortlessly, he started urinating. He urinated inside his trouser. But for him, he was happy to urinate inside his trouser. That was how God delivered him. From that day, he started urinating. That's how his own miracle manifested. You just urinate anyhow. Freely, without knowing that there are people that pay to urinate. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let everything that has bread, if there is some people here with bread, get on your feet and let's give God some praise. Glory! 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 Move forward. Move backward. Move sideways. Move sideways. Stand. Move your head. Forward. Backward. Is God not good to you? God is good. When you think of all of this, that is why God said, so that you take a portion of your income and give to me so that you will always acknowledge that it was not you that got it. It's my power and blessing that enable you to get it. Am I teaching good? That is why God instituted the tithe. And I have not finished though. You know we have not arrived. We, we are still traveling in the next service. There are a number of things I'm going to show you in the next service that will, that will bless you real good. A number of things. Because we must exhaust the lessons that we have from the tithe. Which are the lessons that the church of today will use in the preaching of the gospel. That is why we give today. That is why we give today. There are lessons to glean out that are doctrinally established. That's why we worship. That's why we give. Every time we give, we are honoring God. Every time we give, what our money is saying is God... It's not because I'm smart. God, it's not because I'm connected. God, it's not because I went to school. God, it's not because I'm a graduate. There are many graduates that cannot eat. God, it's not because I'm very handsome or beautiful or I'm attractive. There are too many attractive people that are in brothels and, 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 and prostitution homes. But it is you. I am what I am by the grace of God. So when money comes, what do you do? You deliberately take a portion. When you take a portion of your money aside for the worship of God, what you are saying in essence is, God, you are the reason why I got it. But when you eat all, what you are saying is, God, without you I can do. Every time you eat all your income and you casually bring change to God, what you are saying is, God, I can do without you. By myself, I am self-sufficient. The tithe is to establish your loyalty. And they acknowledge you that God is your source. That was why they were giving tithe. We in the New Testament, the, the lesson we learn is not just 10%. 10% is the limit. Our limit is 10%. I will show you in the next service. Our limit, it, we can't go below it, no matter how bad. That's where we start from, and we move forward. Am I teaching good? Yes. Yes. 
Your understanding of God and your honor and worship and reverence for God is the reason why if Monday you have extra 50,000, you take a portion. God, it's not because I'm smart. Too. This one is for you. Tuesday, you have 20,000. You take another one. God, this is for you. As money is coming, the money is not coming too much that you don't have the, the, the sense to take a portion. That portion you are taking is the reverence for God. Is the honor of God. Are we together here? Don't ever eat all. It's a fool that eats all. It's a fool that eats all. Are you hearing me now? Don't ever eat all. There are no percentages given in the New Testament. God allows you to determine the percentage based on your understanding of what it means to honor. God allows you. Are you not his child? You are his child. Let him see how much his child has sense. Let him see if what I am teaching you is entering. Because the proof of what I am teaching entering will be in the practice of it. If you know these things and you do them, happy are you. I'm teaching good. Some say, but God says he, it should, he loves a cheerful. Wait, cheerful giver. Let me enter second service. You will know the meaning of cheerful giver. I will give you the exegesis of what it means to be a cheerful giver. It's not like I will give it if I like. That is how happy I am. Mm -mm. That's not what it means. That's your own layman interpretation. I'll give you Bible interpretation of cheerful giver. Because, listen carefully, friends. Our ability to recognize and honor God in this life is the greatest blessing we can have. And it comes by teaching. It's true that all those things are abolished, but the reason for it is sustained. Hallelujah. Say with me, Lord, you are the reason. For everything in my life. You are the source of my life. You are not just the source. You are the only source. You are the only source. My confidence, my trust is in you. I rely on you. And to prove it, I honor you. With my substance, I honor you. With my increase, intentionally, deliberately. I honor you. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Father, thank you for the privilege of teaching your word. Thank you for the opportunity to bring truth to your people. Thank you for the light that is shining in our hearts. Thank you that veils are falling and understanding is dawning on our, our, our minds. Lord, I decree that everyone hearing the sound of my voice in this building, online, on television, on radio, that this revelation grows big. So we begin to live our lives in honor. We begin to live honorable lives. Lives of honor. Thank you, Lord. Look at me, everybody. Do you know that Jesus went to his hometown and they dishonored him and he could do nothing for them? Dishonor is costly. In Mark chapter 6, he couldn't do anything for his brethren because they dishonored him. Jesus is God. Dishonor short secures you and creates a room for devourers. There are devourers. So. No, no, no. There are devourers. Neither give room. Who is that? Devourer. You can create room for Satan by dishonor. You can create room for Satan by a life of dishonor. Jesus could do nothing for them. Because they said, is he not the carpenter's son? We know him, uh, familiarity. And he couldn't do anything. Listen, when you live in dishonor, you never change. You will be walking like an elephant. The impact will not show. Because the blessing is not on the work of your hands. He couldn't help them. And he said, a prophet is without honor. No honor. You people have dishonored me. I can't bless you. My prophetic ministry will not benefit you. And he went to other places and look at things happening. Mighty works. Because they honored him. 
Anywhere you find a people of honor, you see the blessing. The blessing of God. See, the blessing of God is not money. The blessing of God is that thing that is behind you that makes anything you touch, it just works. Anything you just touch, just your presence makes things happen because of what is behind you. That's the blessing. That's God on a man. Are we teaching good? If you're hearing, say, I hear you. I was just praying and the Holy Ghost called my attention to that. Father, thank you, Lord. We are a people of honor. We honor you. We honor you in our lives. And we honor you with our resources. And we acknowledge that all that we are and all that we have and all that we will ever be is because of you. We are because you are. Thank you, Father. And I decree that in this service, the blessing is upon your people. Every sick body be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, I say be healed right now. Thank you, Father, for answer prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Are you blessed this morning or what? Glory! Get out an offering. Let's honor the word of God. Get out an offering. Let's honor the word of God. <clears throat> Those of you watching online, we have come of age online to know that you don't just listen to teaching and just sign out. When it's time to give, you must honor, you must honor the word and honor the ministry that brought the word to you. That's the mark of growing in knowledge. So online, there are banking details. On television, there are banking details. We're all giving in honor of the ministry that has ministered to us. And I'm going to talk a lot about that in the second service. I'm going to talk about all of the things that concerns us as a church, as a family, while we take all the offerings, we take what they are used for, and I'm going to show you from scripture how that the scripture is behind all that we do in giving in this church, so that from the point of knowledge and faith, you can be given intentionally. Can I have a powerful amen? amen? Lift up your offerings, let's pray. Father, everyone giving this morning, the blessing is upon our givings, and we thank you that everyone in this building, under the sound of my voice, on TV, on radio, on the internet, internet i decree that you lack nothing you're supplied in all things you've been blessed and the blessing is upon your businesses upon your career upon your family upon your profession upon the works of your hands in the name of jesus and i declare that the enemy has no access to your resources we banish him in the name of jesus god's favor is at work on your behalf great grace is upon you in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen on a note of final letter Listen to me, online family. You don't want to go away. You, you want to stay back and join the next service at 11 a.m. Get more people to be part of it because we're going to totally empty this whole thing on the lessons on the tithe. But I want to thank you for always giving me the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. And I want to thank all of you who partner with us and continually give to support what we do for the kingdom. It's because of your giving that this world is reaching the nations of the earth. And there's a reward for you before Jesus. There's a reward for you because it's not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. So we love you and we thank you again. Looking forward to connecting with all of you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Woo! Glory to God forevermore. He did let's do it as we give. Anywhere on the pulpit, just drop your offering this morning. Hallelujah! For God so Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com You cannot teach the Titan law as giving. You are bringing back what is dead to life. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. The Titan law is dead. The Bible says the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire. He killed Malachi 3 that he may establish the second. So if they take you to Malachi 3, Take them to Revelation 22 that the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire. So, the Titan law has been killed. It must not exist side by side. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me what? Free from the law of sin and death. Join Dr. Abel Damino 
the senior pastor of Power City International, as he explores exegetically Bible doctrine on tight and tithing. Date from Sunday 14th of March to Sunday 21st of March 2021. Time, Monday 15th to Saturday 20th, 6 p.m. daily. Sundays, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. GMT plus one. Join the broadcast on Radio Aquibum 90.5 FM Uyo, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. XL FM 106.9 Uyo, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily. Unuyo FM 100.7, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo, 9 p.m. to 10 10 p.m. and Heritage Radio 104.9 10 p.m. till midnight and also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino Watch Real Time. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Damino. Don't miss out.